Welcome back to Revved Up with Ram Thorburn. If you've been paying attention, then you know that Trump's legal team gave a press conference the other day laying out a lot of what they have for the election fraud case that they are building to try to represent the true results of the election, which we all know was a Donald Trump landslide. Now, this press conference, you can find it on YouTube. It's about, it's over an hour and a half long. So it's really long. So what I've done for you guys is I've gone through it. I've picked out a bunch of highlights and I've cut together a lot of different parts that you need to know, cutting out a lot of the fat. And I'll give my commentary on it as we go through it. But this should save you guys a good bit of time so you don't have to watch an hour and a half long press conference. That can get a little dry after a while. So stay tuned after the break and we will be back with that. All right, so the way that I did this, I just I just took the the full video, which was an hour and 36 minutes long, and I just chopped up different segments that I thought were kind of highlights, and I put them together in, chronolo in chronological order as they occurred in the press conference. So I didn't mix things up or move things around. It's basically just a condensed, shortened version of the of the press conference. There were some parts with Rudy Giuliani where he kind of he kind of bumbles around getting to his point that I just trim the fat. So you might see some jump cuts and things like that, but I didn't cut out any context. I just kind of cut out his commentary on it and some of the some of the theatrics that he does and, and that he goes through. And there were also some things with Sidney Powell that I left out because it was stuff that I all covered in my last video. So I didn't want to get redundant. So if you haven't watched the, the last video that I put out a couple days ago, go ahead and watch that. But let's go ahead and see what Rudy Giuliani, Sidney Powell, and Jenna Ellis have to say about all the evidence they have unearthed in terms of reversing all the fraud that we knew went on during the presidential election. Well, and even the New York Times wrote articles about how uh, dangerous mail voting, mail in voting was. And um, this is the first time we ever did it en masse. And I think we proved that uh, all three are profits. It's not only susceptible to fraud, it is easily susceptible to fraud, particularly if you have a plan or scheme which sounds eerily similar to what Joe Biden told us a few days before the election that he had the best voter fraud team in the world. Yeah, I don't know if any of you guys remember when that came out. He talked about having the best voter fraud team in the world. And it seemed like one of his Joe Biden senior moments where he was admitting what was really going on. And I think I think this is one of those times where if they tell you something, just go ahead and believe them. Just go ahead and believe that they're doing it. Well, they were good. I don't know that they, they were that good because they made significant mistakes like all crooks do. Because, for example, in Pennsylvania, where we have probably our most precise evidence, 682,770 of these ballots were cast, put in, and they weren't inspected, which renders them uh, ballots that are null and void, cannot be counted, have to be removed from the, from the vote. Uh, why? For several reasons, not the least of which is that was basically only one of two places in the state where it was done. So in the other parts of the state, there was a legitimate inspection of the ballots. So if you have two different standards in different parts of the state, one favoring one part of the state, the other disfavoring the other part of the state, that's a classic violation of the Equal Protection Clause of the United States Constitution. Uh, Bush v. Gore being the most recent case that, uh, that, that teaches that. Uh, that's not the only fraud that went on in Pennsylvania. All of the other frauds carried out in the other states by the Democrat uh, bosses uh, happened there as well. For example, if you've made a mistake in that ballot and you lived in Philadelphia or in Pittsburgh, uh, you were allowed to fix the mistake. But if you lived in the 
what would be considered more Republican or Trump part, parts of the state, you were given no such uh, right. One of our plaintiffs, Mr. Henry. Can and I think they're going to have a really strong case when it comes to this in Pennsylvania, because in Bush versus Gore back in 2000, one of the big issues was that constitutionally all ballots have to be treated the same. And so if you have in a single state certain jurisdictions, certain counties that lean heavily Democrat where they will actively go out and allow you to fix your ballot if you get them wrong, but then you have these Republican areas where they do not grant you the same courtesy, you are not treating the ballots the same. And therefore, it's going to be very, very difficult to certify the results of that election because they are breaking the constitutional ruling that was that was decided in Bush v. Gore back in 2000. Now, interestingly enough, we actually have three of our Supreme Court justices, Amy Coney Barrett, Brett Kavanaugh, and John Roberts, that all worked for the Bush team in the 2000 Bush v. Gore case. So I think they are going to have to understand the precedent that they set in that case. And to me, the, the, the real one to focus to focus on there is John Roberts, because he's the one that we can never actually re, that we can never actually rely on to to side with the originalists, to side with the conservatives and the other Republican appointed justices. He's kind of a swing vote in and of himself, and he has more and more readily sided with with the liberals and i think he was the one that said there's no such thing as an obama appointed justice or a bush appointed justice bs bs we all know that the courts have been politicized because the left has been politicizing the courts for decades now but i think the fact that john roberts actually worked on george bush's legal team in 2000 where they where they came up with that ruling I think that's going to come into play, and he's going to have a very difficult time siding with the liberals, siding with the Democrats, if that that's the case. Because one of the things that made him famous, one of the things that got him actually uh, appointed to his first judgeship in 2003, was the fact that he worked for George Bush on that case and then became chief justice in 2005. So I think that's going to be a huge boon, and I think that they're going to have a very strong case about equal treatment of balance because of this i think it's the, the 14th amendment where that all where that all ties into play i believe don't quote me on that a absentee ballot and he failed to put it in the secure envelope inside he just put it in open naked that ballot was cast aside because it was invalid because that breaks the um privacy of the of, of the vote in pittsburgh and in philadelphia if they noticed that there wasn't an inner envelope they'd contact the voter and allow him to vote again or if he didn't fill it out completely or if he made a mistake and didn't sign his full name he was allowed to cure it there is no such provision under the law of pennsylvania the democrat secretary of state made that up in order to maximize the votes in Philadelphia and Pittsburgh and to minimize the votes in the other parts of the state. Clearly illegal, clearly voter fraud, easily provable, hundreds of witnesses, maybe thousands. Yeah, you can't be giving preferential treatment based on party when it comes to curing ballots. And <clears throat> he's right. We have been saying ever since they started pushing this mail-in ballot nonsense, that this is going to create absolute election havoc. And of course, we were right. It has created absolute election havoc, but I think they're putting together a very strong case. Uh, this is just Pennsylvania. So, you know, Rudy Giuliani was talking more about the affidavits that they have, the stuff that is more tangible, where they've actually seen ballots be brought in, different, different malfeasance that has happened. Uh, he's dealing with more of the witness, eyewitness accounts and the procedural malfeasance that, that the Democrats were engaged in, where Sidney Powell is talking more about the computer systems, Dominion and all of that. That's why I said I cut I, I didn't put all of Sidney Powell stuff in there because she talked about a lot of things that I already talked about in the last video. So it isn't exactly new and breaking news. Um, but let's go ahead and continue with Rudy Giuliani. So that takes us to Michigan, where there was an honest Democrat who said they were cheating. And we'll show you her affidavit, because I know you keep reporting falsely that we have no evidence, that we have no specific acts of fraud. 
That's because the coverage of this has been almost as dishonest as the scheme itself. Yeah, that is absolutely factual. They, the, the coverage on the entire election has been absolutely astounding how bad it is and how disinterested the media is to actually report on what is going on. They, they're acting like the election's already over, that Trump is just not conceding because he won't, uh, he won't admit that he lost. They're, they're saying that all of the claims of voter fraud are baseless, that there is no evidence. Well, here they are showing the evidence, and I guarantee you, come tomorrow, they're still going to say they didn't show us any evidence. What the fuck are you talking about? She was, um, she was assigned to uh, voting duties in September, and she was trained by the city of Detroit and the state of Michigan. She was basically trained to cheat. She said that um, I was instructed by my su supervisor to adjust the mailing date of these absentee ballot packages to be dated earlier than when they were actually sent in. The supervisor made that announcement for all workers to engage in that fraudulent practice. This witness goes on the witness stand and she will say, I was told to adjust the date on the absentee ballots. I witnessed election workers and employees going over to the voting booths with voters in order to watch them vote and coach them for whom to vote. Completely illegal. She also said, I observed a large number of people who came to the satellite location to vote in person, but they had already applied for and submitted an absentee ballot. So, so she observed a lot of people voting twice. I was instructed not to, valid, not to invalidate any ballots and not to look for any deficiency in the ballots. I was instructed not to look at any of the signatures on the absentee ballots. If she was instructed to look, not to look for any of the signatures on the absentee ballots, why the heck do you sign it in the first place in order to identify it? She was instructed not to do that because many of the absentee ballots were fraudulent, and they knew that, and they didn't want to have a count of that. On November 4, 2020, I was instru instructed to improperly predate the absentee ballots when the receipt date was actually November, was, was after November 3rd, 2020. Now this is really significant because Justice Alito of the Supreme Court instructed Pennsylvania that any ballot that comes in after eight o'clock on November 3rd, 2020 had to be put aside and not opened because there's a question as to its legality and its constitutionality. What she's telling you is that they blatantly disregarded that order. That they took ballots that were marked the fourth and the fifth and the sixth, and they marked it down for the third in blatant disregard of the order of the United States Supreme Court. So that one witness alone saw them predating ballots, saw m people voting multiple times, was told that she was told not to check any of, not, not to verify and validate any of the, any of the votes. All of these things, just one witness, and this was all told to her top down, which really goes to show that the election fraud is systemic. These are this is widespread. This you, you can't say that this is uh, that there's no evidence of widespread voter fraud when we have sworn affidavits under penalty of perjury coming out saying that they have seen all of this malpractice, all of this malfeasance, and it's being directed from the top down to the election workers, and so. To, the, to those who are saying voter fraud, well, maybe it's not the voters who are committing the fraud. It is the election officials. And that is, by definition, widespread systemic voting fraud. Maybe it's not voter fraud, but it is voting fraud. It's, vo it's, it's election official fraud. What they swear to is that at 4.30 in the morning, a truck pulled up to the Detroit center where they were count counting ballots. The people thought it was food, so they all ran to the truck. It wasn't food. It was thousands and thousands of ballots. And the ballots were in garbage cans. They were in paper bags. They were in cardboard boxes. And they were taken into the center. They were put on a number of tables. At that time, they thought all the Republican inspectors had left. All but two had. 
and an employee of Dominion, who uh, we will address a little bit later, Dominion. And here's what they jointly swear to, that every ballot that they could see, every thing they could hear, these were ballots for Biden. All of them. When they saw a ballot, these were ballots only for Biden, meaning there was no down ticket, just Biden. Many of them didn't have anything on the outer envelope because these ballots were produced very quickly, very swiftly, and they're estimated to be a minimum of 60,000, maximum of 100,000. Many of them were triple counted, which means they were put into the counting machine this way. Once, twice, three times. I didn't see that. I don't know that, but for the fact that three American citizens are willing to swear to it. And we're not going to let them go to court and do that? We're going to let this election go by when there are, in this case, 60 witnesses? Yeah, I mean, that, that is absolutely insane. And we all know about the late night voter dumps. We, we heard about, I, I think it might have been in Michigan, or maybe it was maybe it was Wisconsin where they had they said a van, a Ferrari, and some other car pulled up and just started unloading boxes of ballots. And at three four o'clock in the morning, when they had stopped counting for the night, and they snuck them all in, and they all went to Joe Biden. And you know th what's what's so suspicious about the down the down ticket or or not having anybody voting down ticket, the va the uh, votes being just for Biden and nobody no other Democrats down ticket is. It shows that they rushed to fill all those ballots out, to manufacture all of those ballots, and they, they had to manufacture so many, they couldn't worry about down ticket. They could only get to the, the, the top one on the ticket, Joe Biden, Joe Biden, Joe Biden, Joe Biden. And then they brought them all in, all for Joe Biden, nobody else. And we, you know, we I've seen a lot of people use uh, that, that little graph, you know, where it had Trump arching up and then it had biden underneath and all of a sudden it went like that and they use it to to create the f for fraud and those spikes don't happen naturally they don't happen naturally that, that's that's so blatantly obvious and then they went and they counted each of them three times so if you're talking he said it was between sixty thousand and a hundred thousand so let's say let, let, let's say it's eighty thousand let, let, let's let's split the difference and go eighty thousand there are eighty thousand votes there that, and if they triple count them, that means 240,000 votes got tabulated for Joe Biden that were all fake. That is a massive, massive vote swing. So there are 60,000 ballots in Milwaukee County and 40,000 ballots in Madison that, as far as we can tell, and this is why we've, we're auditing, because we have very good information, the numbers are going to come out about here that don't have applications. Under the law of the state of Wisconsin, already decided, if there's no application for an absentee ballot, the absentee ballot is thrown away. And there were many. Yeah, and that's the, that's the law. You know, it, it, the, there are states that did the universal mail-in balloting where they just, here in California, they just shipped out a ballot to everybody. I got ballots here at my apartment with names that I don't know who the hell they are. Um, they, but in Wisconsin, they weren't doing that. You actually had to request your ballot. So they had all these people coming in with ballots that they were sent that they weren't requested. So either those ballots were fabricated or we had election officials all the way back to the beginning of the process, sending out ballots to people, maybe people that have moved out of state. Maybe I don't know who all they would have sent them to, but they were not requested and they were not able to prove it. And they counted them anyways, despite the fact that they were illegal, just on just on the surface, illegal. You don't have to dig in to any sort of legal questions about this. They were not supposed to have been sent out. They were sent out illegally. If they're sent out illegally, then they can't be turned in legally. ...in which there was an overvote. Now, let me explain to you what an overvote is, which is something you should have explained to the American people because it's about the clearest circumstantial evidence of massive fraud that you can have. An overvote is if 200% of the people who are registered in a district vote. Think about that. 200% of 
of the registered voters in a district vote. What does that mean? That means somebody voted twice. That means somebody who's not entitled to vote voted, an illegal, a person from another city or state, a person who's not registered. <laughs> but what it means is that those are illegitimate votes. You don't have an overvote of 200 percent or 300 percent. Nope. You don't have an overvote of 100 percent. Most, most uh, precincts don't have 100 percent turnout. In fact, classically, it's considered to be an overvote if you go over 80 percent. Well, in Michigan and Wisconsin, we have overvotes in numerous precincts of 150 percent, 200 percent, and 300 percent. One of the reasons why the two Republicans did not certify in Wayne, um, Michigan, Wayne County, Michigan, is because the overvote was so high, monstrously high, in about two-thirds of the precincts in the city of Detroit, which means magically two and three times the number of registered voters turned out to vote. In fact, we have precincts in which Two times the number of people who live there, including children, voted. That's absurd. Yeah, that's absolutely absurd. And that is a clear, clear, clear cut sign of voter fraud going on. And, you know, there are places like in Australia, they actually have compulsory voting. You have to vote in Australia. And even still, they rarely get above 90 percent because people die and people move away. And so you, you will never actually get 100% voting. And of course, if you go over 100%, there's no question about it. There's no question about it. It's mathematically impossible. How can you have more than 100% of the people voting? And how can you, in some of these places, have 250% turnout? Clearly voter fraud. You know, and I, what, what happened with this, and the reason why the, the uh, overvoting is becoming such an issue, is that America turned out for Trump in numbers that were unprecedented in American history. That may, he is the most loved president we have ever had. He's, of course, hated by the establishment and anybody who follows the establishment, who, who bootlicks the establishment. But to the regular people, we love Trump. And we, he got so many votes that they had to fabricate such a massive amount to get over the top that there was not enough people for them to, th th there weren't enough people for them to match their fake votes to. There weren't enough people living in the areas to actually account for all of the votes that they had to fabricate. I mean, you want to talk about a landslide victory? If they have to, if they have to go that hard to cheat, Trump probably, Trump probably won seventy five percent of the vote nationwide. Would not surprise me in the least. In the states that we have indicated in red, Georgia, Pennsylvania, Michigan, Wisconsin, Nevada, and Arizona, we more than double the number of votes needed to overturn the election. More than double the number of votes needed to overturn the election. And that doesn't even take into account all of the Dominion voting stuff that Sidney Powell is going to be getting into and that I talked about in my video the other day. It doesn't even talk, this is just one area of this is just the election day malfeasance that was happening on the ground in person, person to person crimes being committed. It doesn't even go into figure into uh, doesn't even figure in all the fraud that happened digitally to even help exacerbate the problems. And I'm wondering if, you know, if part of the reason why the overcorrection, all of the over um, over voting occurred was because. The two, the, the the digital, the digital fraud side and the man-made fraud side, they couldn't actually co they they couldn't work in sync because they had to work at such a mass scale on such a rush because they never expected that Trump would get like how many votes did he get like seventy seven million seventy six million I don't know I forget how many Trump actually got probably I wouldn't be surprised if Trump got ninety million votes counting all the ones that were burned and thrown away maybe not ninety million but eighty five million. Uh, would not be surprised in the least. I think the logical conclusion is this is a common plan, a common scheme. It comes right directly from the Democrat Party, and it comes from the candidate. Clearly. That's the reason why Hillary Clinton said, don't concede, even if you're losing. 
That's the reason we had a Freudian slip by the candidate. And he said he had the best voter fraud team in the country. That's the reason why he probably didn't have to go out and campaign. <laughs> he had to have known what they were going to do. This had to be planned in advance. Yeah, and that is one thing that just makes absolutely zero sense about this entire election. How could a man who spent his entire campaign hiding in his basement, calling lid days at 9 o'clock in the morning, never hitting the campaign trail, never getting more than you know a, a couple dozen people at his rallies, how is somebody that runs a campaign like that going to beat a man who pulled 57,000 motherfucking people to an airport hangar in Pennsylvania? Not going to happen. Not real. There is no... Th th there is no logical, reasonable, rational way to for you to say that just looking at the two campaigns, looking at the support, looking at the enthusiasm, there's no rational way that you could say that Biden even beat Trump, let alone in, by, by the, quote, landslide that they have him beating Trump by. No way. It's it, it, You're never going to get me to believe that. I mean, that, that you're, you're pissing on my leg and telling me it's raining. No. Hell no. The fact that there, there's absolutely no way in a clean election that Biden could have won simply because of the style of campaign that he ran. Simply because of who he is as fumbly, bumbly, sniffy, sniffy, creepy Joe Biden. Nobody's voting for that man. The only people that voted for him weren't actually voting for him. They were voting against Donald Trump. And the amount of love that Trump supporters have for Donald Trump, you're never going to be able to match that with hatred. You're never going to be able to match the love for Trump with the hatred for Trump. There's going to be plenty of people that are just like, I don't like Trump. I hate Trump. But man, I'm not going to go wait in the line to vote him out. You know, like hate, that the, the political hatred like that just isn't as powerful of a motivator as the love for a candidate that we see for Donald Trump. Does not make any sense whatsoever. The math simply doesn't add up. It's not human. What we are really dealing with here and uncovering more by the day is the massive influence of communist money through Venezuela, Cuba, and likely China in the interference with our elections here in the United States. The Dominion voting systems, the Smartmatic technology software, and the software that goes in other computerized voting systems here as well, not just Dominion, were created in Venezuela at the direction of Hugo Chavez to make sure he never lost an election after one constitutional referendum came out the way he did not want it to come out. We have one very strong witness who has explained how it all works. And, you know, that, that really surprised me. I mean, obviously, I knew that China was going to be heavily involved. and But I never really thought Venezuela and Cuba were going to be involved in... E even even tangentially involved in the rigging of our elections, just because they on the world stage they seem like such inconsequential countries. But the fact of the matter is, is because they are you know socialist and communist, which is really one and the same thing. They are probably essentially satellite proxy countries to the Chinese communist government, because you you know, like you said, China has a strong presence in those countries. So any kind of operations that were going on there, of course. Some of these operations go back, you know, over a decade and a half with Hugo Chavez and all of this being created for Venezuela to rig their socialist elections, their their socialist agenda. It's 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 amazing though because you never thought that Venezuela would be the would be in the news about U.S. election rigging, but because of who they are and how they got to where they are and being a proxy of China. It actually kind of makes sense. It actually kind of adds up. It tracks. Now, the software itself was created with so many variables and so many back doors that can be hooked up to the Internet or a thumb drive stuck in it or whatever. But one of its most characteristic features is, is its ability to flip votes. It can set and run an algorithm that probably ran all over the country to take a certain percentage of votes from President Trump and flipped them to President Biden, which we might never have uncovered had the votes for President Trump not been so overwhelming 
in so many of these states that it broke the algorithm that had been plugged into the system. And that's what caused them to have to shut down in the states they shut down in. That's when they came in the back door with all the mail-in mail -in ballots, many of which they had actually fabricated. Some were on pristine paper with identically matching uh, perfect circle dots for Mr. Biden. Others were shoved in in batches. They're always put in in a certain number of batches and people would rerun the same batch. This corresponds to our statistical evidence that shows incredible spikes in the vote counts at particular times. And that corresponds to eyewitness testimony of numerous people who have come forward and said they saw the ballots come in the back door at that time. Yeah, can you can you imagine if they had an algorithm that was switching a certain percentage of Trump vote, Trump votes to Biden and Trump was still winning in a landslide when they stopped counting for the night? How how massive of a landslide that must be if they were switching like seven to ten percent of Trump's votes to Biden, which would be like a fourteen point swing. Probably wasn't quite that much. Uh, maybe 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 five to seven percent, something like that. And Trump was still when it was still landsliding when they had to pull the plug on counting the votes so they could shuffle in all these backdoor ballots. I mean, he was. Pro I I still think Trump probably Trump probably got seventy percent of the vote. I think Trump got 70% of the vote. In fact, I heard that Trump actually won California and New York. Could you imagine Trump winning California? I can because people don't realize this, but California has more Republicans than any other state in the nation. But I think I think California has been ground zero in, 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 in testing, rigging elections for a long time because nobody questions it. It's the land of fruits and nuts out here. Nobody actually expects to have just governance coming from california nobody actually expects a republican to win so they can sit there and they can work all of this stuff and nobody pays attention to what california does because oh it's just a given that it's all going to go democrat well that's because they've set the system up that way we have so many republicans in the state it doesn't make sense how democrats even have a super majority in this state it doesn't make sense i think they have been i, I think they have been testing a lot of this and, and perfecting the craft of election rigging here in California for decades now. Itself is utilized in 2,000 jurisdictions in 30 states. It has been uncertifiable in multiple states who realized all the problems that it had, including Texas. Experts have described it across the board from a Princeton group of three professors to uh, experts that we have talked to about its end user vulnerabilities. People can admittedly go in and change whatever they want. They can set the ratio of votes from one thing to another. They can say that uh, a Biden vote counts as 1.25 and a Trump vote counts as 0.75. And those may be the numbers that were actually used here. It's not just the swing states that were affected. The algorithm was likely run across the country to affect the entire election. Like I said, we only discovered it this year because of the overwhelming number of votes for President Trump in the swing states that caused the machines to have to shut down for them to backfill uh, for adding votes. We have evidence of different numbers of votes being injected into the system, the same identical, unique six-digit number multiple times in at least two states that we've analyzed so far, and I'm talking about like 341,542 votes for Biden and 100,012 for Trump. Um, there's no explanation, no logical explanation for the same numbers being injected 20 minutes apart into the machine. Yeah, now that's crazy. The, the whole idea about the, the ratios, how you're able to weight the votes so that a vote for Trump, it really only gives him a 0.75 and a vote for Biden gives him a 1.25. That is absolutely nuts that you were able to go in and rig something like that. But man, and you, you know, Tucker Tucker Carlson has, has created his own row because he's called out Sidney Powell in saying that, oh, you're making all these claims, but you're not showing us any evidence. How is she so? How is she supposed to show evidence at a press conference like this? How is she supposed to show this to us when this is all going to play out in courts? You can't go out and spoil your court case by making it all public beforehand. So there's a lot of people that are kind of 
looking at Tucker, wondering whether he's hedging his bets or whether he's, you know, selling out, you know, going going full Fox News on us because we all know that Fox News is no longer representing the conservative audience that it's pandered to for years or for decades. Uh, we all know that, that, that that's a sham now. But now we even have Tucker calling it out. And apparently, uh, you know, Tucker was saying that they invited her onto the show and she she got all mad and said to stop calling them and then she came back and said no we actually provided a lot of uh you know a lot of evidence and they said it wasn't enough or i, I don't know there's a whole there's a whole row right right now going on between tucker carlson and sydney powell and you know i've always liked tucker carlson but again anybody who works at fox news you have to understand that they have overlords it doesn't matter whether you trust them as an as an individual there's going to be things that they want to talk about the fox news will just say nope Nope, we're not going to air it. We're not going to air it. They don't have the autonomy that independent creators like like uh, like I have, where I can sit here and say anything I want because I have nobody dictating what I can and cannot say other than, well, YouTube. I guess YouTube can. So, <laughs> uh, fuck YouTube. There's been no oversight of Dominion or its software. Workers in each county were trained by Dominion, but there's no evidence of any monitoring otherwise. We have testimony of different workers admitting that they were trained how to uh, dispose of Trump votes and uh, add to Biden votes. The software has a feature pursuant to which you can drag and drop any number of batches of votes to the candidate of your choice or simply throw them away. So we have mathematical evidence in a number of states of massive quantities of Trump votes being trashed, just simply put in the trash like you would on your computer with any file, and uh, Biden votes being injected. Yeah, I mean, the fact that we were using this Dominion software or the, these Dominion voting systems with the Smartmatic software and all, and all that stuff is absolutely, that's a crime in and of itself. Because we know that we now know the origins of it. It was created to rig socialist elections in Venezuela and South America. Um, she she talked earlier about you know she has an affidavit from this guy who was actually involved in the rigging of elections in Venezuela and other countries in South America, and they used the Dominion Smartmatic voting systems. We got the ties to the Clinton Foundation that I talked about the other day through that Delian project. You know, you go watch my other video. You can hear I, I talk a little bit more about that. It's it's an absolutely sketchy company. It's had no oversight. And you can also see in the video that I talked about the other day, the very scurrilous way in which they even came about, essentially having technology ripped away from ESNS and given to Dominion, who was a basically a company that couldn't get sales because they were hyper-partisan. And the Obama administration just ripped off the, the technology from ESNS, told them you have to give it to Dominion, and then they gave, they gave Dominion a huge market share. This was, this was all orchestrated by the Obama administration back in 2010 to be able to set into place the ability to rig elections. This has been in place for a decade for Democrats, just with Dominion, just with Dominion alone. And I want the American public to know right now that we will not be intimidated. American patriots are fed up with the corruption yes, from we the are. local level to the highest level of our government. And we are going to take this country back. We are not going to be intimidated. We are not going to back down. We are going to clean this mess up now. President Trump won by a landslide. We are going to prove it. And we are going to reclaim the United States of America for the people who vote for freedom. Yes. Gotta love Sidney Powell. No, we will not cower. We will not bow down. We are not your dad's Republicans. We are not the Republicans who, for decades, just worried about being liked by the Democrats. You know what? Fuck the Democrats. Fuck them. They don't like us. They can suck our dicks. Who gives a shit about them? They have run, run roughshod over us, our country, the people, and the Constitution for too damn long. Guess what? It's our turn. I'm going to shove them back down to the ground. What you have heard, I'm sure, in the fake newspapers tomorrow will be one of two things. Either there was not sufficient evidence that we've presented or we spoke too long. 
Okay, so what you've heard now is an, basically an opening statement. This is what you can expect to see when we get to court to actually have a full trial on the merits to actually show this evidence in court and prove our case. This is not a law and order episode where everything is neatly wrapped up in 60 minutes. For those of you who are here in this room or have maybe tuned out in other networks, clearly you've never been court reporters. Trials take time. Putting on evidence takes time. This is basically an opening statement so the American people can understand what the networks have been hiding and what they refuse to cover because all of your fake news headlines are dancing around the merits of this case and are trying to delegitimize what we are doing here. Let me be very clear that our objective is to make sure to preserve and protect election integrity. Jenna Ellis came out spitting fire came out spitting fire and she was she was ragging on the media like crazy and you know they they deserve it though they deserve to be the they, they deserve to be the american people's whipping posts you know i mean the, the the media is so so corrupt i mean they are absolutely a soviet uh ccp communist china style propaganda arm at this point they absolutely refuse to cover this stuff and to cover it fairly and to admit that there is evidence. I, even even after this came out, they have presented a rock solid case here. And, it, you know, they say, oh, well, they haven't shown us the evidence. They're just talking about it. They, Rudy Giuliani was reading from sworn affidavits. That's evidence. You know, uh, I, I get that, you know, we, we can't see necessarily all of the, the data that Sidney Powell is talking about. But also, that's going to come out in court. That's not to be played out in the court of public opinion. Now, I understand because I want to see that information just as bad as anybody else. I want to have that confirmation because I hate sitting here saying, well, I believe it's true, but I need to know for a fact. I mean, it's tough. It's tough. But they can't go ahead and start airing out all of their laundry before they get to court because that's not going to play well with the judges who are going to be mad that they've, that they've played out the case in the court of public opinion that's not going to play out very well and also it's going to give the opposition time to counter and sabotage you don't ever show the other team the moves that you're about to make i mean i think they've shown enough and like jenna ellis was saying this is just an opening statement they're going to just come in with that notebook that that, that binder that's like three feet tall and just slam it down on the table and say donald trump is our president this is the court of public opinion right now. We are not trying our case in the court of public opinion because if we were, we would get unbiased jurors. I would strike 99% of you from the jury and I would be allowed to because of the fake news coverage you provide. You are not unbiased jurors. And until you step out of your role as a journalist and actually go in. I don't think they need to step out of their role as a, as a journalist. They need to step out of their role as activists and into a role of journalists. These people are not journalists. They're all activists. They're, they're political agents. They're political operatives. To a courtroom and you are a judge on a bench that has sworn an oath to be unbiased in our separation of powers, then your opinion does not matter. The facts matter, the truth matters, and if you are fair reporters, you will cover that fairly and appropriately, and you will allow coverage of our media team here and our legal team. That is absolutely shocking that all you cover are around the margins, and I've seen all of you taking pictures right now, and I can anticipate what your headlines are going to be. If you are not willing to talk about the evidence that has been presented, then that is absolutely unacceptable. Damn straight. I'm just, you know, at this point, I'm just kind of playing the, the Jenna Ellis stuff because it's just fun to see the media ragged. I mean, and she, she is ragging them hard. But what has happened in this case is that state and local level officials and all the way up have changed the rules. That's what the Democrats do. If they don't like the rules, they change them. And they change them at the last minute. They manipulate them. They want to tear down our American system. She's sounding like me right now because I have said this time and time again that this is what the Democrats do. If they can't win by the rules, their their answer is to change them. And, you know, it's funny because 
The best part is, is that it always comes back to bite them. It's just like when they changed the rules and they got rid of the, the super majority to confirm judges. It used to be before 2013 with Harry Reid, you needed 60 percent. You, you needed 60, uh, 60 votes to confirm a judge. Well, they were pissed off that the Republicans were blocking three D.C. Circuit Court judges. And they said, we're just going to get away with this or, or do away with the super majority. So all we will need is a simple majority. And Mitch McConnell told him, y'all are going to regret this and sooner than you think. Well, three Supreme Court justices later for Donald Trump. And yes, they are regretting it hard. But again, that's what they do. And so now what are they going to do? What are they talking about? They're talking about, oh, well, we're going to pack the courts. So their answer then, after they're losing, they, they change the rules. It backfires, bites them in the ass. And so what do they want to do again? Change more rules. I th they're writing articles now about how we need to get rid of the Constitution. You know, Hillary Clinton loses in 2016. And what is it? Oh, we got to get rid of the Electoral College because she won the popular vote. Yeah, well, we're not a goddamn democracy. In fact, our founding fathers hated the idea of us being a democracy. We are a representative republic with democratic election processes. But we are not a direct democracy. Direct democracies are terrible. That is the tyranny of the majority. For example, you asked us about Wisconsin. We have to first create a contest in Wisconsin before we can move to bringing a uh, fulsome federal lawsuit. The contest from everything I can see, is going to overturn the vote because it's going to show somewhere around 100,000 illegal ballots in two counties that Biden carried by 75, 80 percent. And you know how close Wisconsin is. And what I'm talking about is the absentee ballots for which there were no applications. And that's not just a small matter. The reason for the application and the reason to keep the, all these things together is precisely to avoid what the Democrats did in this election. But they don't care. They don't. They don't. They don't care. They, they will just if they can't change the rules, they'll break the rules, and then they'll rely on their institutional power to never be punished for it. There isn't a single person in this country that would have believed that we have states that are stupid enough to have our vote sent out of this country. There, you couldn't possibly believe that the company counting our vote with control over our vote is owned by two Venezuelans who were allies of Chavez, are present allies of Maduro, with a company whose chairman is a close associate and business partner of George Soros, the biggest donor to the Democrat Party, the biggest donor to Antifa, and the biggest donor to Black Lives Matter. My goodness, what do we have to do to get you to give our people the truth? <laughs> Man, yeah, you got it. Yeah, I just had to put that in there because it's emphasis on everything that's going on between, you know, the whole idea that he was also talking about our um, our votes being sent out. They were routed through Spain to a server in Germany. And how our votes are being stored out of country. Absolutely insane. Absolutely insane. And the media doesn't give a fuck. Media doesn't care. Media's covering for it. Because it's all part of this establishment commun... They're flat out communists at this point. They're flat out communists. They act like communists. They operate like communists. They talk like communists. They push, they, they, they push cultural Marxist agendas. They're fucking communists our country our cultures are run by communists that means we are a quasi communist country at this point and that is why it is absolutely imperative that this all works so that we can get rid of these motherfucking communists that uh, what publication are you with <laughs> Sorry, I, I just had to play that. <laughs> you just see it in and everybody just starts laughing. Like, yeah, you're a joke. You're a joke. Communist News Network. <laughs> and there's no doubt about it. This was not an individual idea of 10 or 12 Democrat bosses. This is a plan.
You would have to be a fool not to realize that. They do the same thing in exactly the same way in 10 big Democrat controlled, in most cases, crooked city. And when I say crooked city, go look at how many of their officials have gone to jail in the last 20 or 30 or 40 or 50 or 60 years that they have dominated and destroyed those cities. Uh, absolutely. Amen. Absolutely. Yeah, this is absolutely a coordinated effort. And, you know, it's it's the whole it goes back to the whole idea of these cities, these Democrat run cities and their machine politics. You know, cities, always, cities, they're all run by Democrats and they all have this machine style politics with Chicago really being like the the the, the model. You know, I think here in California, it's a little different. It's, it's a different style machine. It's a little more granola out here. But, you know, Chicago is very mob style machine politics. It was very strong armed out here in California. It's much more subversive. It happens underneath the surface and it does it with a smarmy, slimy smile. You know, G Gavin, Gavin Mussolini. Um, but, yeah, it, it is. It, 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 something's got to happen. Something's got to happen here because we are at a breaking point with these Democrats and the way that they're running this this uh, this country and the lack of freedoms, the lack of voice. We the people are just, our name is mud to the to these people that work in politics in these Democrat-run cities. Our name is mud. They couldn't give a fuck about us. You Just let us eat cake. You know, let us eat cake. That's it. Interesting little tidbit. You know, that, that, that whole thing, let them eat cake, Marie Antoinette. Was it Marie Antoinette? Yeah. Um, cake was actually the dirt that the mud and like horse shit that caked up in people's shoes. She wasn't talking about birthday cake. Suggesting that Joe Biden was part of that conspiracy. I just wonder what your evidence Honestly, I don't know what Joe Biden is aware of or not aware of. And I mean that as a lawyer, not trying to be not trying to be cute. I've watched him, I've observed him. Um I, I honestly don't know how much he's aware. I don't know how much he decides and how much things are decided for him. Yeah, I don't think Joe, Joe Biden barely knows his name. Now, honestly, I think Joe Biden is absolutely in on this. I don't think that, you know, he, he might be fumbly bumbly Joe Biden, but he is also crooked Joe Biden. He is also a slimy greaseball snake who has been selling our country out to China for decades now and other countries as well. And so if you think he doesn't know about this and, you know, He's not so far gone that he doesn't understand why they kept him off the campaign trail and why they just kept him in the basement the, the entire campaign and how that still means he's winning. He knows exactly what's going on. He has no fucking problem with rigging an election. He has no problem with stealing America. And, you know, I, one thing that I meant to mention before when I was talking about Harry Reid and changing the rules in 2013, I think that part of the reason that they felt so comfortable changing the rules is because that was in the Barack Obama era. And the whole plan was eight years of Barack Obama followed by eight years of Hillary Clinton. And that would be the end of America. They would steal America with, the, with those two presidential terms. They never expected that Hillary would lose. And they already knew the plan laid out from the beginning. So anyways, guys. This, these were some of the highlights that I thought should be shown from the press conference. It was a lot of information. You, you should go back and watch the entire thing if you want so you can really see everything that was going on. But I wanted to give you guys some of the highlight reel. Anyways, guys, that's it for this video. Go ahead and hit that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Also, follow me on Rumble and BitChute because I just got I, I was just put in YouTube jail for a week. Who knows how long I am for the for YouTube? They might end up booting me. Well, you'll be able to find me on BitChute and Rumble. I think Rumble is really the one that's starting to grow faster and faster. But you can also find me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Parlor, Minds, and Pilled.net, all at Ram Thorburn. And if you'd like to contribute to the channel, which would be greatly, greatly appreciated, there are some pieces of equipment that I could use to help further improve this show. There are links to my subscribe star, Patreon, and PayPal down in the description below. Anyways, guys, thank you very much for watching. And as always, rev your engines, ride hard, and fight like hell. Every time who I